this is my air rower, my ergometer, which I hate to love to hate. And they're happy because they have a furnace filter. Uh, we have uh, wood heat and we have hydronic floor heat and so we have no central air. So we have no uh, furnace filter and so the dusty part of our house uh, becomes a problem. We get dusty. It gets dusty in here. So I started making uh, my own filters using these standard um, easily available uh, filters that you get from your hardware store and they come in all kinds of sizes anyway. I picked a size, 20 by 20. So here's a 20 by 20 that's basically wrapped around uh, and inside it is a bathroom exhaust fan and uh, on the top, you know, I didn't want to, I wanted to vent up rather than along the floor. So that, um, that actually worked really good except it's top heavy so it wants to fall over. I wanted to kind of go to an easier to swap out filter so then I got a slightly different design that was more like a standard cabinet with just a press fit of the filter in the front and uh, an, a much smaller fan because this one was also quite loud probably because it's a cheap bathroom fan. So then I went to just some little muffin fan. This is like a 12 volt uh, DC fan um, it pulls about a watt. It's really, really doesn't use much power, and it's much quieter. Of course, it's much slower, but it doesn't really seem to matter. And uh, you know, that's what that's the color of that one before uh, got all sorts of airborne schmoo attached to it. So anyway, um, I, I'm going to make another one of these because I like the quiet of this one, but I. I have to solve uh, a one problem. You can see a big part of this is its back. You know, it's got a big back, and then you buy these in two, so you got to put the other one somewhere. So uh, I think you can see where I'm going with this. I raise chicken, and uh, I have them slaughtered and cut into pieces. And these are the bones and the necks and the backs. There's probably uh, 30 pounds of chicken parts there, chicken bones, etc. And so I got this uh, giant stock pot. I'm going to make a giant batch of stock because we got to get it out of the freezer. One, two, three, four, five. Six, seven, eight, and vinegar. See you tomorrow. Somewhere in there is a dog. Ernie's going for a haircut today. He's Here we are, roughly 24 hours later. Okay, so here's my proto stock. And uh, I'm going to leave it out on the porch overnight. It'll be freezing tonight. And we'll congeal up that gross layer of fat. When you make a, the soup stock, you are left with boiled up parts. Some of this is nice dark meat that I'm going to pick through and find. A lot of this stuff is stuff my dogs want to eat. And I'll pick through and I'll accumulate that for the dogs. And a bunch of this stuff is bone. And I got something coming for the bones. And uh, some of this stuff is gross stuff that will end up in the garbage can. But most of it will be used. A gross half hour later, I've got five uh, banquet style dinners for the dogs. I got some necks and wing tips I didn't want to fool with, and I've got a bunch of bones. The bones uh, we wrap up in newspaper and we burn them, and then the calcined bones and the ashes go on the garden. So 
the phosphorus and magnesium in these bones will end up in the garden again. I didn't quite make it to touch down on this new air filter, <clears throat> but you can see where I'm going. Uh, it's a real light hardboard, quarter inch hardboard box that would barely stand together except for these corner gussets. And anyway, it's got uh, kind of a little ridge uh, to support the filter on both sides and there's a filter on the front and there's a filter on the back. And there's a muffin fan bolted to a hole in the side. So this design is uh, better than my other two designs. It's, it's lighter. It's got fewer pieces. It uh, disposes with the whole back wall. Disposes with trying to figure out where to put the second filter that you got to buy in a pack of two. And uh, even if you've got to put it up against the wall, you know, one side will just get less dust on it and you turn it around and the other side will work just as well. So I think I'm pretty happy with this. I uh, went through the junk drawer to find a wall receptacle transformer uh, that's rated at 9 volts but unregulated and so it's, um, it's driving this fan at about 12 volts which is basically what the fan wants so I think we're gonna call that good enough and now I'm going to solder and shrink wrap these wires this is the brains. It's basically just one fan and then there's a little figure of eight knot there for strain relief. Given that this is low voltage, I think I'm not breaking any laws here. The cover for our pool is weighted down by these bags full of water. And uh, every one of them failed. So there's there's two surviving units. There's one there that's halfway alive, and there's one here that's halfway alive. And probably ten others failed completely. So I've got to put this cover back in place and weight it down because it's finally warming up, and the spring peepers, uh, little frogs, are going to start coming out and committing suicide in my pool. And I'm going to mill, make a little intake so that I don't need to uh, worry about stuff getting clogging that pump, which I had that problem last year pretty badly. So here's some little induction motor uh, pump with a hose coming out of it and a, and a cord coming out of it. And I got some kind of baskety thing with holes all over and I've got this pillowcase and I got this rock. So this thing's gonna have a tendency to float away because it's made out of hydrocarbons and uh, this thing's kind of a little weight and I want it to kind of sink onto the plastic so I'm gonna I'm gonna weight it and hope it all works together and I'm gonna just cable tie the bugger on there. Okay well there's the assembled intake unit. You know um, Overkill's easy. Uh, anybody can overkill. Anybody can spend a bunch of money and a bunch of time doing something. Well, that's about as much as that ever flows, so I think that's working. Okay, after dinner and the cover is basically back in place, except one of those bags got blown to smithereens. So I gotta find some replacement for that. Really, these are garbage. <laughs> these things, you can't buy a set of these every year. Something, something else is required. So now I want this water, so I'm going to start pumping it uh, from the top surface of this t uh, cover underneath into the pool. Leave behind all of this uh, stuff that's blown in here over the winter. I don't know if you can hear that. Well, I'm sure you can hear something. That's the spring peepers starting. There's a spring peeper and there's a leopard frog over there. That's that brrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrr
And this filter system uh, worked out really well. That pillowcase is pretty gross, but I imagine it could be washed. So this pot of stock was sitting outside in the cold. And this layer of fat on top has turned into a piece. And I'm going to try to A, remove it from the soup, because it's gross. And B, I'm going to try to use it for soap. Okay, so I'm going to call that around 500 grams of fat. Okay, it turns out I only have enough lye for 420 grams of fat. Very little was going on, and uh, I finally got it up to a boil, and it sort of turned uh, creamier. Nothing particularly interesting has happened as yet, despite breaking most of the rules. The emulsion broke. I could re-establish the emulsion with a whisk. I broke the emulsion again. I could re-establish it again pretty easily. Uh, and on cooling, it really firmed up. So I think this is uh, on its way to being soap. And then I made this high-tech soap mold out of a jug for cream.